Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I'm willing to bet that an absolutely insane XRP rally is inevitable. Now, I, I will state I do not have a financial background, okay? So I'm not offering financial advice, and you absolutely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. But that said, I'm happy to share my, my honest opinions here. And as an enthusiastic member of the XRP community, it's fun to talk about this stuff and make YouTube videos. But I just want to make sure that's all this is. It's just a for fun a topic of conversation. I'm like you. I'm interested in this stuff. Um, but uh, just don't buy or sell because of me, period. You know, Talk to a financial advisor. But th consider this, consider this. And, and what got me thinking about this, so there, well, it was a few things, but here's a, one of the pieces I'm going to be running through in this video. It's from you today, and it's titled, Mike Novogratz, I Still Love Cryptocurrency. And, and a lot of what's covered in here, it has to do with the, the state of just kind of the world, you know, what's going on here. Think about the, the printing of money, and so you've got the situation where... Although, admittedly, it seems like lately XRP has been more or less trading sideways, the environment um, is is expanding in the world of crypto, just in general. And it's getting, like, this is my opinion, It's things are getting set up in such a way, thanks to a whole number of, of factors, for just an explosion in crypto. And I think, ultimately, uh, the, the most money will flow uh, and the long-term viability will be with those cryptocurrencies that solve a, a real-world problem. And XRP, I believe, will, will be among those. That, that would certainly be my guess, because my investment thesis is that utility matters and will win the day. So you've got this. You've got illiquid markets to where it doesn't take much money to flow into double, triple, quadruple initial investments. And again, it's not because there's something scammy about it. Like People think that. People that don't know anything about crypto. How could it be not be a scam if you have an opportunity for tens of thousands percent gain? Well, Okay, there are scams in the world of crypto. There are scams all in all sorts of asset classes, right? So there, there can be some, but that's not the reason for these returns. The reason is there's not much money in it. It doesn't take much money to, to, to flow into double, triple, quadruple, whatever it is, any particular cryptocurrency. So you've got that. You've got a situation where these are scarce assets. You've got XRP, which is a deflationary cryptocurrency. And, uh, and then you've got inflationary un inflationary <laughs> uh, United States dollar. And so we'll be diving in here, but these are just some of the core reasons without diving in deeper, which I'm about to do, but uh, of why I'm just looking at this and I'm like, my gosh, what do you guys think is going to happen in the coming years? And so like, I don't pretend to know for sure. I understand that in investing in crypto and XRP is risky, but just by definition, it absolutely is. But man, I could not be more confident for the long term. Because I think utility actually does matter. Um, and so as I record this, you've got XRP at 24 and a half cents. You've got Bitcoin at $10,675. Uh, the market cap for the asset has $345 billion. And you've got this tweet from DIY Investing that I like. So I thought it'd be a good way to kind of get rolling here. DIY Investing wrote the following. People that are bearish are talking about how everyone's bullish, I'm short. Meanwhile, literally everyone in my feed is bearish, so yeah, I'm long AF. Get wrecked, noobs. And you know, it's, it got me thinking here. And, and I don't pretend to know, like, in the short term, the, which way, you know, like, the price action is going to go. It's, it's, like, fun to watch and all that. But it made me think of something um, that uh, the block blockchain backer mentioned in a video I was watching of his, I guess it was just yesterday. And it's something I had thought about, but I don't think I've ever articulated on my channel. And so I thought I'd just mention it. It's just this idea of like, so for those of us that have been around for years, and at, and at this point, I have been in the world of crypto almost three years now. Um, I know what to expect. I understand market cycles. I've been researching Ripple and XRP for years. And I think I'm better for it. You know, I, I think that all of the information that I have acquired uh, has, has put me into a position where I'm not going to emotionally buy and sell. And f I'm, I'm worried for all the new people that jump in and don't know what to expect. Uh, I think there's going to be a ton of emotional buying and selling when you consider that, you know, it's normal to have on a given day, like 30% swings, whether it's up or down for any cryptocurrency. Like in the in the stock market, people are like, holy hell, what just happened <laughs> in the world of crypto? Uh, it's actually par for the course. And again, it goes back to what I was citing at the beginning of the video, which is just markets are liquid. So it's not scary. It's to be expected. It's not scary at all to me. Not to me. Um, it is to be expected because there's not much money in this. It'd be weird to me if that wasn't happening because these are new markets, right? 
And you have been seeing that the volatility, which is provably so, it has been decreasing o over the last decade that the asset class has existed and market cycles are lengthening. This is all to be expected. It's all steadying out, right? Um, and so you get into this piece where they're talking about Mike Novogratz, which begins as follows. During his latest appearance on CNBC's Squawk Box, Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novogratz voiced his bullish Bitcoin sentiment, uh, stating that he still loves cryptocurrencies as a hard asset despite a recent pause in the market rally. The former hedge fund manager also says that he has a big gold position while offering a bearish outlook on the U.S. dollar due to the surging U.S. budget deficit. And he said, quote, I don't see our deficits miraculously collapsing. Yeah, I don't I don't either. I, I, it's just spend spend mania, right? Ugh. Anyway, the United States Department of the Treasury announcement announced that uh, the country's deficit surpassed three trillion dollars for the uh, the first time in history last Friday. It is predicted hit three point three trillion dollars by the end of this budget year. Yeah. And so we're, when they're talking about the deficit, that's just for this fiscal period. In terms of the actual debt level, my gosh, what are we? I haven't looked in a long time, to be honest. Are we like over $25 trillion or, or like what is the number now? It's Whatever it is, it's freaking absurd. I know it's completely ridiculous here. And so you see stuff like this. And that's why for the people that don't know any better, that keep their money, uh, keep their investments and in, yeah, call it investment, uh, it, just in, in cash, you're losing tremendous value every single year. And that's why, to me, it makes sense. And this is what I do for myself. I invest in assets, and the more scarce, the better, right? Assets. So whether you're talking about gold or silver or cryptocurrency or real estate, whatever it is, I mean, there's a finite amount of land. You know, real estate isn't exactly the worst thing on the planet, despite what happened in 2008 and 2009. I understand. I'm just saying. Uh, it, it, and so it, as far as, like, if you had to guess which asset class out of all the asset classes is going to perform the best over the next decade, I'll, I'll give my answer. And this is just a guess. I, 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 maybe I'm wrong. But I would, I would be willing to bet it's the cryptocurrency asset class. I think it's going to dramatically outpace the S&P 500. And I just put it up against anything, really. It, it doesn't matter. I just And again, it has to do with a lot of reasons. But the biggest among them, perhaps, is just how illiquid. And I think that you'll see a lot of, uh, I hope, if you're talking a decade down the road, a lot of the you know, thousands and thousands of cryptocurrencies that don't have any business existing, hopefully they end up kind of getting... Uh, left by the wayside here because you don't need thousands of new forms of money for every single new business idea but that's what we have today but a hey, nascency of this asset class there you go but i think that ultimately that'll mean that those cryptocurrencies have staying power there'll be just that much more money for those and so once that happens and more money flows in and people get why this asset class deserves to exist and does exist and will continue to exist as long as the internet exists what do you think is going to happen well i think more money will uh, just inevitably and unstoppably keep pouring in. That's what I think. And so that's why I couldn't be ultimately more thrilled about XRP, which is a scarce resource. It is. It's a scarce asset. That would be the right word. It's a scarce asset. And uh, I see it actually being used today. I, I, I could not be more optimistic. And if I'm wrong and it goes to zero, fine, so be it. I'm putting in only what I'm willing to lose because admittedly some, there could be some angle I don't see or something dramatically could change, jump out of nowhere. And then who knows? And then it tanks. But I don't. I have no reason to believe that. And so I'm going to continue to invest accordingly because that's what I want for myself. And each person on the planet, as they discover XRP, gets to make that own determination for themselves. And I'm just doing what I think is uh, the best thing for me right now. But um, let me see here. So three, yeah, three trillion. I think that's yeah. So they had this chart on the screen. This is amazing here. Oh man. So they cite here the government was forced to aggressively ramp up spending in order to stimulate the economy amid another recession. The last time the U.S. Re recorded a budget surplus uh, when the government's uh, tax revenue exceeds its spending uh, was in distant 2000. Yeah, well, how about that? Shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf for this next piece uh, titled Morgan Stanley Strategist Recommends Bitcoin as Central Banks Ramp Up Money Printing. Oh, God, I'm, I'm on board. And look, because look, I am not anti-Bitcoin. Like, anytime I say something negative about Bitcoin, I'm actually just joking. I mean, other so, like, I'm, I give, um, like, genuine critiques of it in terms of, you know, transaction speed, this and that. But outside of that, I'm usually, like, I'm just teasing it if I say something negative about it. And so I would love for Bitcoin to have tremendous staying power. And who knows, maybe it is the case that just because it's the first cryptocurrency, it's now a standard. And even though it's the clunkiest of blockchains on the planet, pretty much, maybe it will have genuine staying power. And right now the market says so. I just don't know if it'll always be the case. 
Because uh, to me, cryptocurrencies that don't fundamentally do anything, don't drive value, don't deserve to be used as a store of value. But again, who knows? Maybe it won't be in the case. Maybe I acknowledge this, that it, it could be the case that just because it was the first, uh, it gets to stick around forever. I'm skeptical of that, but maybe. I'm not ruling that, that concept out. There's no way for, for, for me to know. We, we, we just got to have to wait and see how humans continue to treat it. But right now, they're saying uh, Bitcoin's here to stay. Um, now, of course, <laughs> in terms of the cost of uh, transactions, given the clunkiness of the blockchain, uh, people could change their minds. When you're, can you imagine if you had like a 500 transaction fee for Bitcoin? Would, would, is there a point where people can be like, no? <laughs> I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, into this piece now, though. Uh, Morgan Stanley, investment uh, management's chief strategist and head of emerging markets, has recommended Bitcoin as an alternative investment to stocks amid central banks' massive money printing policies. He says that alternative assets like gold and cryptocurrency could keep doing well while stocks struggle. Uh, a head of emerging markets and chief uh, global strategist at Morgan Stanley Investment Management, uh, Rushir Sharma, sorry if I'm butchering that, I'm not good at four names, uh, stocks, gold, and also Bitcoin in an interview with CNN on Tuesday. Uh, the an investor and fund manager joined Morgan Stanley in 1996. Now Sharma began by explaining that tech stocks and risk assets would really be hurt by rising interest rates. Uh, despite the Federal Reserve's indication, the strategist believes that interest rates could start to rise more quickly than we think, possibly even as early as next year. He explained that we have been seeing such high stock prices even though the economy is very weak. Uh, by the way, to be clear, why do you think that's happening? Because money was printed and then it was just thrown into it, so it, it's it's not it's not the least bit surprising, but uh, that's why also I'm not going to be shocked at all if there's a correction, which by the way may end up affecting the world of crypto because you saw what happened in March, right? Stock market tanked and the crypto asset class followed, but it ultimately recovered, and so that's why I mean like I'd rather have even if I couldn't invest in crypto for some reason, like if it's just like you can have if somebody's like Moon Limbo, you can have money in the bank or you can have stocks. I'd still pick stocks. Well, I'm a long-term guy, though, because, like, I understand, like, even if it tanks, even if, well, even if it does go down 30% or who knows, pick your number, whatever it is, I still think that it, it's it'll it, they'll be worth more in the future because there's a, a lot of history uh, to draw upon to, to have confidence because you'd have to believe fundamentally that the economy that is the United States would never recover to say that the stock market would never come back any time that it crashes. Do you really think that? Because I don't. I certainly don't. If the stock market crashes, to me, it, it seems like a buying opportunity. And of course, I'm still more uh, excited about crypto because of the uh, the opportunity for a more notable asymmetrical returns. But yeah, absolutely. If you're if you're a long term investor, whether it's real estate or stock market, even if something bad happens in the short term, well, I'd rather still have the assets than the United States dollar, which loses purchasing power every single year due to inflation. So. I'm on board with what the, the Sharma gentleman is talking about here conceptually. And I know he's, he's citing I mean, like Bitcoin, but really, even if you just think more broadly, the crypto asset class, to me, it makes a ton of sense. And you can tell me you think I'm wrong because I do love diversity of thought. And I know I'm not right about everything. There's no, there's no way I could be. But um, I do believe what I'm saying. That, that's, that, that's for true. But uh, that is it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambu!